Hi, I'm Geoffrey Patterson, and I'll be conducting the Britain Symphonia tonight at the Barbican. I'm here with Shabaka Hutchings. Now, I was wondering, Shabaka, how the Copeland Clarinet Concerto came into your life and how it fits into your life now as a jazz musician. Well, it's been in my life since uh, music college. Um, I studied at the Guildhall with actually Joy Farrell, who's a part of the Britain Symphonia. And I've been playing it for a number of years, and it's fascinated me um, since the moment I started playing it. One, because it's a, a reflection on jazz. Um, it's not a jazz piece, but it's someone taking the form of jazz and using that as a springboard to, for their own, I guess, cultural interpretation. Um, and that's essentially what I do with my music. I don't play jazz in the strictest um, terminology of the word, but I use the American form as a way of reflecting the music that, I've, that surrounds me in London and the music that I've grown up with. So I see that as what Copeland's also doing, um, using jazz as a springboard for um, classical expression. Um, the other reason this piece has always fascinated me is because essentially the, 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 the underpinning of what we're trying to do it, as jazz musicians or classical musicians, I think, is to take an idea that someone is, has notated or, or kind of underlined in some way and animate it and give life to it. So in jazz, that animation, that animating principle is given in real time. So I think of an idea and I give it life and spirit. Whereas in classical music, the composer composes the music. He, he notates it and he tries to describe as clearly as possible how he wants that music energized and then it's the role of the performer to bring that um, spirit to the music, to bring that energy and, and life to it. Um, and it just, it really is a way of just connecting what, what all the different music types do. Um, really kind of seeing music in this way as the performer is a, has an animating principle and they give the music a, a breath of life. So because Copeland did compose this music with the energy of jazz in mind or with the energy of a jazz player in mind, I kind of see that as a connection between myself and the original impetus for the music, even if it doesn't um, necessarily sound exactly as Benny Goodman played it. You know? and, and how do you find that Benny Goodman, who of course around this time was commissioning pieces from classical composers, whether when he played this piece, he was playing it as a jazz clarinetist or a classical clarinetist, or those categories kind of meaningless in the sense of how he interpreted it? Yeah, I mean, they are meaningless to a certain extent. I guess um, if he was a, a strictly classical player, there would be a certain, I don't know, this is a certain approach he has to just the, the idea, the, the strictness of the idea. Um, but maybe as a jazz musician, um, that still reflects in, in how, he, how, he, how he plays it. Uh, I don't know, I, I get really, I get confused sometimes when, when I'm asked to, to talk about categories and labels yeah. because they are, there is truth to them. But when you're actually in the thing itself, when you're actually in the midst of the music, it just becomes a person's interpretation of an idea. Um, so for me, Benny Goodman gives a, a great interpretation of, of Copeland's idea for the piece, as far as I can see, comparing his rendition to Copeland's notes on the page. Um, but personally, I really like David Schifrin's version the most because it's the version that on just an oral level makes me feel the best. Sure. And I don't, is it fair to say that, I mean, the, the one kind of obvious element of jazz that is missing in most of classical music making is improvisation, yeah. but that it's possible to retain that in the sense of how you animate the music. As you say, the music, the composer's notated, that the animation of that in the performance still embodies a kind of improvisation? Yeah. I mean, improvisation is an, you know, it's, well, there's many levels of looking mm. at improvisation, but one level of improvisation is a spiritual aspect and not spiritual in an esoteric way, but spiritual as in you are adding an improvisatory spirit to the ideas or the notation that you're encountering. Um, and I think that's what, you know, me or Benny Goodman is trying to do. They're trying to give a, give a type of approach to the music whereby on any given night it will be different, not because we're um, expanding on what's written, but because we're actually letting something of our personal um, aptitude come out in the music there, you know, in the spot. And it might just be something about the expression, some little nuances in terms of the dynamics or turns of phrase, but I think there's always going to be improvisation unless you're trying specifically 
to play in a mechanical manner. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks, Rebecca. That is fascinating. Uh, I'm really you. looking forward to playing the piece with you. Okay. Thank you.